Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. So today we're going to be doing the UEF faction tutorial. Now if you want specific unit statistics, you're going to need to go over to the unit tutorials. I'm going to assume that you already know the mass costs and the DPS values and all that of all these units. I'm just going to talk in general about how to use them. Now I'm, I've am i been saving UEF for last because it is the most self-explanatory faction. So I'm probably not going to spend a whole lot of time here, but I'm going to hit the main points for what you need to know. First off, in the early game combat, you do have the best lab in the game, the Mech Marine. It does have the highest uh, DPS and health combination. So this guy is going to make wicked ghetto gunships. Um, the UEF T2 transport is also amazing for ghetto gunships because it has a very, very high carrying capacity paired with a decently good... Uh, ground fire gun and awesome anti-air. The T2 uh, transport for UEF is the only one that's capable of fighting off interceptors in the early game. So you're going to want to use this to abuse the uh, mech marines, the ghetto gunships, as much as you can barring flak from the enemy player or you know over investing in mass and losing out in land control. This is an awesome troll tactic that does fantastically well ghetto gunships in the T1 phase are not that bad either. So that's going to be a handy tool in the beginning. You have a very solid tank. The striker, this has really no distinct strengths or weaknesses. It is a T1 tank and it does its job well. The Lobo is the best building destroyer out of any of the other tanks. Extremely high alpha damage. Very good area of effect. However, it has a slow fire rate. Not that great versus units. And it does have the... Uh, uh, vision radius where it lands its shot. So you're going to want to mix a few of these into your T1 forces, but not very many, just enough to nail the uh, Tech 1 point defense down and not a whole lot else. So the Tech 1 phase, not super spectacular, but no weaknesses either. You're not really going to have any worries there. So to go with your T1 units, though, you are going to want to get the combat upgrades on your ACU. It is similar to the Seraphim, or I should say Seraphim is similar to the UEF since UEF came first. You can drop the T2 upgrade and the gun upgrade on your ACU very early in order to get the extra health and regen from T2 and the gun upgrade for range and 200 damage per shot instead of 100 but it still does one shot per second unlike the other acus which double the fire rate to get double the damage so with this uef acu um, i personally would not use nano repair um, it is more expensive than t2 and it does have slightly higher regen but there's no health gain and you don't have the build options from T2. I think this is on the slate to be rebalanced at some point to add a little bit of health or to tweak something to make it worth it. But as things stand, just about 100% of the time, I'm gonna go for T2, not the nano regen. So those are your two very early game upgrades. And then you also have the option of the tack launcher, which is going to, it has similar characteristics to the Seraphim. It has the same range as a stationary attack, but you are mobile because, hey, hey, you are an ACU. You can walk around all you want. And uh, it does not, however, have the same firing arc. So the TMD is going to knock down a, the UEF ACU TML easier than the Seraphim. Additionally, it only has two area of effect, although it does still do 6k damage as opposed to three area of effect for Seraphim. And one other thing that I got to note is that the TAC missile's minimum range for UEF is bigger than the... Um, let, me, let me just show you here. We're going to turn this on to build. Bam, there's our missile. If you try to fire right next to the ACU, it's not going to work. The missile, because of the turning rate, hits way out there, whereas the Seraphim can basically fire point blank, um, and so it makes a great melee weapon. That's something you're going to have to keep it in mind as UEF, that you're not going to be able to use it quite as effectively as a combat tool. All right, so that's your early game upgrades. Moving into the T2 phase, uh, you've got a very solid T2. 
It is not the absolute strongest, but it has a good group of tools. The pillar is a high health, low cost tank. You're gonna be able to roll out more of them early because they have shorter build time, lower mass cost. You're gonna mix them into your units more easily. But um, cumulative, they cannot one-on-one -on -one take any other T2 tank on but cumulatively they do very well additionally they have a very high uh movement speed i think it was three they're one of the few t2 tanks that is actually pretty speedy so you're going to want to put that to good use and then of course you've got the amphibious tanks and all your other normal options um the one oddball actually two oddballs i'm going to point out uh, you have the mongoose which is a range bot not quite as high a range as the hoplite but extremely good aoe and alpha strike so this is going to be extremely handy for i think i'm saying extremely way too much i do apologize folks that's going to be our sponsored word of the day um you're going to want to use this to dart in fire a volley at t1 units and then back up for the reload time which is around eight seconds and then lay in another round and they do not have enough health to stick around and fight but they are extremely fast so you can get out of bad situations easily Pair it with mobile shields for extra health and you got a brutal combination. You're always going to want to build mobile shields with a UEF army. They do consume 110 power, but that's 3,500 health in a very large bubble. It is cheap health that you can add to your forces. The other oddball unit is going to be the Sparky, which does have Radar Jammer. If you were watching the live cast from the other day, uh, someone used Radar Jammer very effectively against me. had me completely freaked out because it generates false radar blips all over the place that even draw fire your units will miss fire on stuff that doesn't exist it can be a handy tool this thing has a riot gun that can fairly effectively defend the engineer versus a couple of t1 units and um it does have the combat t2 build suite no radar no intel no eco and no factories but it does have all of the offensive and defensive structures from t1 and t2 so that is your sparky and then late t2 phase slash early t3 phase you're going to have another upgrade available on your commander the body shield this is going to give you a huge amount of extra health 24k and that is going to make you extremely survivable you can throw the gun t2 and possibly t3 at this stage of the game in and uh, give yourself the bubble shield, which is going to give you a whopping 18k on your ACU plus 24k on your shield. So it is a very hard to kill commander with a lot of damage potential there. Plus, when you throw in the T3 build suite, you've got yourself the amazing point defense creep that belongs to the UEF. And I'll talk about that in just a second. The air accompanying your late T2, early T3 stage is going to be um, the Janus, which has extremely huge area of effect. And there I go with extremely again. Um, having trouble coming up with descriptive words this cast. It does not, however, do very well at hitting mobile targets. The Janus has horrible accuracy. It's easy to dodge. You best use it on structures which cannot move out of the way of the bombs. It is, however, going to lay down a good amount of damage with its napalm effect. It is damage over time as opposed to brute force damage on the alpha strike. Um, your renegade, no, stinger, I'm sorry, renegade is cybern. The stinger does have a docking clamp. We've discussed this before. You can add a lab for a little bit of extra DPS. You can airlift a T1 or T2 tank, or you can carry flak with your gunships for anti-air support when you reach your target destination. Drop the flak on the ground, and bam, you've got instant air cover. So that is something that you're going to be able to use. Solid T2 tort bomber, and then the UEF strat is a very good mix of area of effect versus damage. Um, so you're going to want to make good use of that, and then of course ASF and the scout, normal stuff. Your oddball out is going to be the UEF T3 transport. I do have to say the broadsword for the mass is the best mix of HP and damage anywhere that you will find. Um, the broadsword I feel like is an underutilized tool for the UEF. It is speedy, it is agile, and it packs a wallop. So you're going to want to put that to as much use as you can. The T3 transport is able to carry six 
count them, six T3 units. It has the highest carrying capacity of any transport. Interesting trivia, you can actually pack 700 DPS into this sucker if you load it with all the labs it can carry. And you did hear me right, 700 plus DPS with a shield, with anti-air, and the additional ground guns of the transport. Not that I would recommend building them, but hey, it's a hilarious thing that you can throw at people. Those T3 units you're going to be carrying are the strongest land units of the game at the T3 stage. You've got the Percival, the mighty Percival that everyone loves to build, the only T3 land unit that can effectively kill off bricks and is extremely hard to deal with, although it can be dealt with. But this is a good uh, spam option. You may or may not want to mix in a couple of Titans very early on in the game, strictly for raiding, and also to beat the T1 down and T2 down off of your Percivals. Once you get five or six Percivals in one spot, there's no point in having any Titans. So now you know. The T3 already is solid and so is the T3 Mobile Anti-Air. UEF does not have a direct fire experimental, so you're gonna want to spam the Percival to great lengths, throw in some mobile shields if you wish for some added DPS. And then when you get to the part of the game where you're going up against solid defenses and additional T4 and T3 swarms, you're going to want to throw down a fat boy. This is the epitome of the perfect support unit. It is probably the only T4 that is directly mass equivalent with any peer at T1 through T4. Um, it lays down an incredible amount of damage, but is a very low health unit. As you can see, 12,500 health with only 20,000 on the shield. This thing is absolute paper. You gotta protect it both from strap bombers and from other T4. Blocking with Percivals is your best bet. That's gonna give your direct fire power. And then the Fat Boy is what is going to break apart bases and make progress. Pair the two together and it is an unstoppable land force. You're pretty much gonna have to resort to killing it with air unless you manage to have a huge mass advantage and you can shove a couple of megaliths down the throat of that army or come up with some other creative solution to it. T2 stationary artillery is about the only thing that outranges the fat boy and can effectively kill one. And you can also get very lucky with tack snipes if you're able to land some tack missiles on the fat boy or even close to it as you can take down the shield pretty easily. The shield bubble is very large. Uh, one other thing that I do want to mention is that the Rambo Com for UEF is one of the single strongest on a per mats basis units in this game. You can get the double gun upgrade and the uh, shield for it, and that is going to give you a whopping 16k health to start with before vet on the SACU, 32k in the shield, and about 1k damage with high range and high area of effect. This sucker is brutal. Two of these can take out pretty much any T4 with a bit of micro. And once you get three or four of them in one spot, they become extremely difficult to deal with. Once again, disregarding air or other such things. One other thing that I do want to talk about with the UEF commander is the fact that you can effectively push fire bases with only your ACU. And this is a tool that you may or may not want to use depending on the map. This one we're looking at ISIS. So this would actually be a perfect candidate for the UEF strategies. Let's see if I'm still in range of my hives. There we go. There's my bubble shield. All right. Bubble shield has 36k health. You barely gain any health, but you do gain area. This buys you 36,000 damage worth of time. You can walk into range of another fire base you can throw down multiple T2 shields inside your own shield, which prevents the other player from shooting them before you can get the actual shield dome up. That's going to let you get all of this cranked out. The T3 UEF provides pretty decent build time for this. You can kind of generate yourself infinite health if you do it this way. And then you can push Ravagers. You can push T2 point defense. The UEF has the most cost-effective shielding solution in the game. They're not the highest health and they're not the cheapest, but they're the best balance of build time versus mass cost versus HP and bubble size. So UEF is truly the king 
King of the Shields. Um, I know Seraphim technically has stronger shields, but they take a lot longer to build and cost way more. And UAF is going to be the faction of choice for pushing heavy grade fire bases. They're the only faction that can effectively push late game fire bases because of the Ravagers. They do have the reach to outrange um, any T2 point defense, which is the failing point of the other factions, because once the uh, mobile missile launchers come online for everybody, T2 point defense creep is kind of useless unless you just have a ridiculous amount of build power. One thing that you can use in your quest for build power is the Hive, which is actually a very handy tool for dragging with your ACU. You don't have to worry about engineers getting in the way of structures that you want to build. You just drag a cloud of drones behind you. Now, these are far less mass efficient than engineers are, but they do wonderful things for your build power and speed of building in pretty much any situation. With a recent patch of the game, the ability of the ASF to target drones was removed. So as long as you don't have any interceptors or T2 air nearby, nothing is going to kill these drones except for ground-based anti-air. So that means that you can build drones without fear. You can not have to worry about ASF coming through, shooting at the drones, killing all of your shields, overkilling the drones and landing shots all over the ground with that massive 400 DPS that ASF have that can cause terrible things to happen. So that was removed and drones are a bit more viable late game because of that. I think that covers everything. Except for this unit right here, I do want to give him an honorable mention. UEF does have a T3 mobile artillery and a T3 mobile missile launcher. This guy fires a cluster of missiles, three together, with a spread out reload time instead of firing missile after missile on a single reload. Um, it is specifically designed for overwhelming TMD. Each missile has two health, so it does overwhelm them a bit easier. And it also packs a freaking wallet. I believe the DPS on the three missiles put together was 2400. I may be mistaken on that. And from the time the first missile hits till the time the third missile hits, there is not enough time for the majority of units to get out of the way. So you're going to land that entire 2400 damage down on that one unit. Make them awesome for snipes. Put them on hold fire, get them close to the target you want to kill. Release hold fire so they all fire at once. There's pretty much no amount of TMD that can deal with that situation and it lays ludicrous amounts of damage down on any single target. So it is better for precision work and for just higher brute force DPS than the Demolisher, but it's basically totally useless versus units that are mobile uh, as far as a moving army situation, and it does have slightly shorter range than the Demolisher. Those, so those are just a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Now that I'm thinking about it, I may also be wrong about, I'm pretty sure that the missiles have two health. Someone will correct me in the comments if I am wrong, and as we all know, I am far from infallible. I do these things off the top of my head, and hopefully they are helpful to you guys in your endeavor to get better at this game. I've got one more planned tutorial to do. That is going to be the naval tutorial. It's coming out next week, and it will be a long one because naval play is extremely complicated in Supreme Commander. It is probably one of the finer points of subcom strategy as far as mixing naval vessels, the intricate details of the micro, and all the different things you can do with it. So I would sit down and be ready for a good talking to, but hopefully it'll help you guys in an area that you ask me about a lot. My main goal in producing these tutorials is to let you guys have a resource that you can tag on to where we don't have to explain the same things over and over again to new people. We can point you to the correct video, you can get the information you need to know out of it, and it will help you improve your game. So, hopefully this is pushing towards that goal. As always, I thank you so much for watching these things, and I will see you guys on Thursday for the next GameCast. Have a good one.